Welcome to our Suffolk Libraries Day Online Book Festival. I'm Lisa, the Reader Development Librarian for Suffolk Libraries. And as a charity, our annual fundraising day, Suffolk Libraries Day, is vitally important to us. And we are so grateful for your support and your donations. Thank you, everyone. Before this evening, this orphan event, I am so totally thrilled to be joined by the brilliant author, Joy Ellis. Hello, Joy, and thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Lovely to be with you. It's, it's just marvellous. Well, I wanted to start right back at the beginning with you, Joy, and the famous five when they were smuggling to the top and some to do with a wagon train TV show. Can you tell us about that? I'm not too, oh yes, the wagon train, I've forgotten about that. <laughs> well, I always used to love writing stories. I mean, I loved reading. You know, the best place for me ever was creeping into the library and sneaking out books that I really shouldn't be getting at my age. Um, but I, I loved writing stories. And uh, my dad used to love to watch wagon trains. And uh, so I decided I could, I could do something like this. And I used to write stories along about cowboys and Indians. And, but I used to, I used to um, illustrate them as well. So I used to love drawing. So I'd have all these pictures <laughs> all along with my stories as well and my mum and dad were so thrilled with these you know they used to show them around the neighborhood <laughs> but i mean it was just something that you know a little one does and uh, it went on into school days and that, that's the one part of english i absolutely adored was was when they said oh i'd like you to write a composition and everybody else was going Ooh, and i was going yes, yes <laughs> this is this is what i love <laughs> and just like so much passion for writing but then it was a while until you started writing as professional author and i think for a while you were florist and you were at the first hampton court flower show i think is that right yeah absolutely yes we had a flower shop in waybridge and uh, it was just an amazing time because it was sort of in the 80s and we the flower shop was in Weybridge so there was an awful lot of sort of stars living around in St George's Hills and we used to get a lot of really beautiful work um yeah and we we were asked if we would join in with the uh, the first Hampton Court flower show and it was just it was a real adventure it was such fun because nobody knew what they were doing to start with <laughs> it was so big yeah it was just massive and it got really, really hot. And of course, it's all fresh flowers. Yeah, and one of my my partner at the time in the flower shop orders these refrigerated lorries. She went out and asked all these different companies, can you give us a refrigerated lorry to store the flowers in? So they were so good. People just turned up with refrigerated lorries for them. But oh, it was it was a great time, it really was. That's amazing. And I think you won an award as well. Yes, we for did. Yeah, the first one it was it was lovely because we imported orchids from Thailand, and they said we had thousands and thousands of orchids, and we made this just huge stand that was just masses of, of orchid arrangements, and it was just it was just so bright and colourful, yeah, and they had uh, Princess Anne came to see it, and it was it was just a great great time, it really was it was so exciting to be in at the the very start of something like that. Absolutely. I think it must have been extraordinary for you. And it was, you know, you obviously got passion for creativity as well. So although it's with the flowers, it's a very creative thing, isn't it, to create those displays? Yeah, I mean, I was an apprentice flower, you know, florist in London up in the 60s, which is another story. <laughs> and if you can imagine what London in the 60s was like. Um, but I was an apprentice for four years um with the top mayfair florist which was constant surprise so i had a really good background uh and i just i love flowers I, I, it's in the family really because my, my granddad was a nurseryman um uh, in it it's just my father was a gardener so it it kind of drifted on to me being a florist i bet i mean obviously you write phenomenal crime books now but i bet you could do a cracking book about your experiences then and all the things the people you met and the the things you did you I imagine, to some of it you really would <laughs> yeah i imagine it's quite some stories but it was it was quite a while later i think you know you got to manage an indie bookstore which i imagine was a lot of fun but sue townsend really did um change things for you you went to greece and a magical fortnight i believe oh absolutely yeah i, I had ma for perhaps uh, about 14 15 years 
So I was quite restricted for a while in what I could do. Mm. Uh, and a lot of people sadly don't really get over it, but I, I was absolutely determined to. Um, and a friend had told me about this writing course. And I thought, well, I'll never get to Greece. You know, I could, could barely get to the end of the road, yet alone get to Greece. Uh, but a friend said, go, you're going to be fine. And for some reason, I honestly believed her. And I booked this up and I, I went all on my own. Um, and it was just the most superb creative writing course. And, and Sue Townsend was, she's a, she was an enigma, bless her. Love her. Um, I know we've lost her now, but. Uh, she, An amazing talent. Oh, and so, such a generous woman. You know, she'd give you anything, you know, all her talent, her time. She just was a wonderful person to know and very, very funny. Well, I wanted to share someone in the comments, Sarah, who said, please do do a book about being a florist in the 60s and include a murder. <laughs> <laughs> we can crime it up. A real one, but like, we had a lot of very strange habits. I did get kidnapped once, which was quite interesting. <laughs> really? Well, I got abducted, shall we say. I, there was this very strange fashion house in London. And the juniors, which I was one of, and another one, a lad called Malcolm and myself, were sent to take all these flowers because they'd got a big opening um, of a fashion um, designer. And we got locked in the bathroom with all these flowers and said, you will arrange them. Well, we were only juniors. And we said, we can't do that. We're just delivering them. And they gave us all these vases and said, you will arrange them and you can't come out until you've done it. And of course, nobody knew where we were. We'd only just sort of gone out and they thought we disappeared. We were gone for hours. All the drivers were out looking for us. And we finished up climbing out of a window. Oh my through. God, this is totally a book. Oh yes. <laughs> well, well, actually it does, we had a question before from John about obviously you, you base your books in the fens. Are, are you ever tempted to like do a different backdrop? Yeah. I, not not these series. I think the the location really they work so brilliantly and intertwine. Location is really one of the characters, to be honest. And whereas, yes, I would like to write something different at some point. Um, these just are all part of it. I couldn't I couldn't take them anywhere else. And I did wonder because obviously you lived there as well, and I thought I'd be like, is there a murderer behind <laughs> me? Because because obviously you base it all there. Do you ever find it eerie yourself? when you're thinking of stories in that place, when you actually live there as well? Well, I do go out quite a lot onto the fens just to sort of get uh, atmosphere. And I've been out since sort of in the evening when the, the mists are coming down and maybe a part that I'm not very familiar with. And it's a, quite a strange county. I mean, you can quite literally go around these lanes and you lose your sense of perspective of where is what. The roads sort of curve off over the fields. You think you're going one way and you think, hang on, the church spires over there. Why? And it, it, it's just you could get lost very easily. And it is quite remote. Um, and yes, sometimes there is a creepy feeling. Uh, well, kind of sort of scare there. yourself. I would. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. I wonder what's there, because you're obviously thinking about crime and murder. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> In fact, I found a very odd house one day. And I said, it got for sale. So I just drove up this driveway. I took one look at this place and I thought, I don't like this at all. I felt really, really intimidated by it. So I actually put it into a book. So uh, the next oh, which one, one? It's coming up shortly. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Oh, we have had another question come through as well from David, who's in our book group, who's asked, in they disappeared, were you aware of the urban explorers? Or did you research it? And I think you really love research as well. Oh, I do. I, lo I love the research. Yeah, I, I actually heard uh, an urban explorer be interviewed on the radio. And I thought, I'd never even heard of this. And I, I absolutely loved it. I spoke to a friend's son and he said, oh, I do that. Want to come out? <laughs> oh, yes, please. If you don't mind having somebody 70 plus <laughs> tra dragging along with you, trying to get over fences. <laughs> So we uh, we actually went to try and get into a big old mill um, and at this particular point sadly uh, I knew I couldn't have done it but there were too many security guards there at the time so uh, we had to back off but yeah I've got some lovely photographs of the place anyway but no I mean I was really interested and then I started looking at books on decay photography which all happens 
you know, in these wonderful buildings that have just been abandoned. Uh, and it's so fascinating. Some of the pictures, you know, and the, the photography is amazing. I just I got really well into it. I, I loved it. And of all the things like you have researched, is there some, is, I don't know if that would be what you just talked about, is there a certain bit that really um, sticks out for you as something that you found particularly obscure or interesting? I think every bit of research you do throws up something new. Yeah, yeah you're looking at one thing and, and you sort of see a little aside, you know, something else, and you think, oh, better read that. You know, I'm going down a rabbit hole, isn't it? I love yeah, that. You don't know what you're going to find. Two hours later, you're thinking, wow, I didn't know that. But it had nothing to do with what you wanted. <laughs> but I think I did do some work on the airfields, the old airfields. Um, a lot of them up here, because, you know, this was Bomber County. Um, so there was a heck of a lot of airfields here. Uh, and a little bit further up the road to us, the, uh, uh, a bomber came down. And they could come down so fast and they would go underground literally and there is a bomber quite close to us where they've, they've decided it's, it's a grave they've never ever dug them up they know there's two men in it um it's it's a fascinating thing it's to do with the impact on the on the farmland and the the soil just comes over the top and they they know they're there but they they won't touch them now because that is now a dedicated uh, grave site for them and there's a there's a memorial there but it's just these things i've never heard of and it's just fascinating it's awesome i mean well, i'll move on to your late oh one way around <laughs> your latest book oh, um, yes. the night thief which is superb i was saying to joy before we started it's quite scary um <laughs> so you know you sort of wake up and your child's picture's missing you know it's nothing to worry about honest <laughs> um so it's just like oh um and you've got this extraordinary knack of kind of bringing that across and sort of making it not only like really gripping but you know I, I just the best way is sort of the emotion of like oh that's really disturbing <laughs> um for this particular book where did that initial sort of spark or um something oh. that you saw or read come from do you remember mm. <laughs> my partner is a, a retired police officer and i'd said to her is there any little thing that happened in, whilst you were you know working that you found either disturbing or something that it is quite unique and she said well we did have this man who used to get into people's houses and just stand at the bottom of the bed and stare at them he never did any damage he never took anything it was all about being in somebody's close proximity in their property and i thought oh yeah, <laughs> it, it is a kind of sh shudder isn't it <laughs> Ooh. and just the thought of what that would feel like to just wake up and find somebody standing there staring at you so I thought, there it, there it goes, that's the next one. And you try and obviously the characters that this, this happens to don't really feel very comfortable in their homes anymore. Right. So it's it's a really sort of violating thing. I'm sure you wouldn't. I, mean, I wouldn't, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I <can't laughs> we're, we're, we're freaking each other out, talking about it. Um, for those that are watching uh, or catching up on YouTube that haven't yet read this, the old comic book, can you tell them a little bit more about what happens with it? Yeah, well, I don't really want to give any spoilers. I know that. it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there might be a murder. Yeah, there might well be a murder. And to tell you the truth, and you probably won't believe this, but the minute I start writing the next book, the one before goes. And in between The Night Thief, uh, I've written... I'm on my third book. Um, there's one that's already gone to Audible because it's going as a, it's a Jackman. He's going as a, an Audible exclusive for four months. So they've got that. Then there's another Matt Ballard been written since then. And to be honest, to tell you, I'd have to go and read the blurb again. <laughs> Oh, that's absolutely fine. I know I, it makes sense. Other authors have said it because you're in, you're in, you know, you, you're starting to write another one or you're editing this one, and it's this constant move mm. where you know you've got all these different stories going on. And I think um, what I wanted to ask you about as well is your your characters in your books. That when you do have that spark, that idea, like for, what from came from your partner, you kind of give it to them and let them run with it. Is absolutely. that right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm a completely organic writer. I plan nothing. You know, it's, it really does just happen. I write chapter one, and as long as the idea is there, I can set the, the sort of location, the scene. I know it's going to be either a Nicky or a Jackman or a Matt, and 
I get all their um, home life in my head. You know, I have a quick skim over the last one I did to see where we left them emotionally. Uh, and then off we go. It, it, and it is very much, very much sort of organic. Uh, very often they take over. I have something in my mind. Oh, yes, it's it's going to be this way. And Nikki or Joseph or Jackman and that just hijack it. <laughs> and it goes up in a completely different direction. What is that a bit nerve wracking as a writer? Or do you, do you are you OK with it coming out organically when you're not really sure what's going to happen next? Oh, I quite enjoy it. <laughs> Oh, OK, because I, I think that would freak me out where I'm like, what, what are you doing? Like one of my characters sort of went off somewhere. I'm like, where are you going? That's not part of the plan. <laughs> no, I quite, I quite find that quite amusing, actually. It's but, a bit like watching a TV programme. Yeah, I can sort of, but they, they do this. I set the scene or they take it over and they're talking to each other or, you know, and then they go off somewhere and I think, oh, <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> but it, it, it just happens. It, it's quite bizarre and very hard to describe. I love that we have had a role for say, like, for example, Lisa Joel said the same thing, that it's the exact same process, that a character's just go and do stuff <laughs> and you just got to roll with it. Um, but I think what what happens when an author like you do does that is you're kind of surprised about what happens, which makes it more likely that the reader is. I really think that, that like we're in it going, oh, didn't see that coming. And it's almost because it wasn't planned and plotted to every no, tiny little detail. I, I think I'd hate to work to uh, some kind of actual plan where this has got to happen and I've got to get to this point to make that happen. It, it just wouldn't work for me. I know it wouldn't. You know, I'd, I'd think, oh, I've done that all wrong, or that, does, that doesn't seem right. I think just letting it all flow along is, is the only way I could do it. And, and you mentioned your partner, um, Helen asked before the event, she said she's a huge fan, she's read all your books, um, but she wants to know if uh, Jacqueline ever helps with the police procedure parts, and I think she does. Oh, yeah, yeah, she, uh, I, she reads everything I do um, as I'm doing it. You know, she, she reads 50 pages at a time. Uh, and she checks all the police procedure and the judicial procedure. And I mean, very often I'll do something and she can't do it. Oh, <laughs> no. really? I was going to say, by this oh, stage, you've written, you, you've written so many books, Joy. I thought she'd be like, do you know what? You've got it every time. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's said, not how it works. No, I, I said, but it, it is a book. Do you think I could? No, you can't. <laughs> oh, please, let me just twist it a bit. No, no, no it wouldn't happen. <laughs> And you just said, like, obviously, when you're writing it, you're passing it to her. Like, Shelley has asked, how long does it take for you to get a novel from the start of it to publication? I think you're quite a fast writer, aren't you? You can normally do it in, like, three, four months to yeah, write I a can, book. Yeah, I can write a book in three to four months easily. <laughs> and and strangely, all my novels, the Nikki novels and the, um, the Jackmans and that, all come out to 406 pages on the word. I don't know why, but it, it always happens exactly like that. And when I get to the end, I can look up and it's 405, 406 or 407. It's quite bizarre. It seems to be I write to a particular length and it, it just happens. It's just, yeah, funny. <laughs> it just works out brilliantly. And I know as you talked about some of the things you did before you got published and it was like a really long journey for you oh, yeah. from when you were first writing novels to actually getting in published. And I know that Sue got to um, when she was still around and you had your first novel published, which yeah. must have been lovely for her to I see you, you hit that success. Yeah. But, um, you know, what was that like? Like, how did you persevere? Because your writing is amazing. So that, how did you sort of go, do you know, I'm going to keep going. This is what I want to do. It, I don't, I loved writing and I did love writing the books. Uh, and I let friends read them because nobody else was interested. So, uh, and everybody said, yeah, I can't understand why they're not getting, you know, publisher doesn't want them. Um, but I mean, I just, I just had rejection after rejection. And I mean, I've not, but we all say you could pay for a room, I could pay for a house. You know, it was just, but I, there was always something. There was a lot of quite, I would say, really good criticism as in, or things that sort of kept you going, like well, one person actually said, we would have taken this, but we've just taken a crime author who's writing in the Norfolk area about the, uh, you know, the, the sort of marshes onto the wash. So we can't really take you as well. 
It turned out to be Ellie Griffiths. I was going to say that sounds a lot like Ellie Griffiths because <laughs> she's done quite a few events with us. And I'm like, that's really eerily familiar. And that's, you know, because she's King's Lynn, you know, she bases yeah. it there. And I mean, if I stand sort of where I went up the tower in Boston, I could look across to King's Lynn. So, you know, I, I totally understood where they were coming from. Um, and that was just a timing thing. And I thought, well, if I were interested, somebody's going to be. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I don't know why, but I knew somewhere along the line somebody would take it. Uh, and in, in the end, Robert Hale picked it up, which, and they deal with libraries, of course. Or well, they did, they, they've gone now. But, uh, but sadly, they only did very short print runs and they were all hardback books. And I think my, my print run, I sold 90, about 90% 90 of the whole the whole lot myself <laughs> bless you but i i love that you know because you enjoyed writing you just went well i'm just going to keep doing it um which is phenomenal and then obviously you've now gone on you've had multiple number one kindle books you know you were crime author breakthrough for audible in 2018 what was that like after all that oh. time and then everyone suddenly went you know what these are brilliant yeah, I still can't believe it. Is it, <laughs> is it like pinch me? Is it real? Yeah, I still struggle to, to understand what's happening. Actually, I asked my publisher if he could just give me a, just for tonight, just to give me a rundown on the, what we sold. And he said, he sent me a little thing that said, over 1 million of Joy's books were read in 2021. And a lifetime sales since Joffy relaunched, um, because, you know, they took the, Robert Hale books and relaunched them, uh, have reached a staggering 2.67 million books and over 809 million page reads on Kindle Unlimited, which is the equivalent to another 4 million sales. We are staggered. <laughs> it's absolutely awesome. It's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I, I, I really like in a way that it can still be quite surreal even when it happens for authors um so those we get a lot of people that are budding like that are starting their writing that watch either live or catch up on our youtube and i think it's reassuring to say you know just to, just because it takes a while doesn't mean it won't happen mm -hmm. and even when it does happen you might not believe it <laughs> i mean never give up on it if you really love writing never give up on it you know it's because it is a bit of an apprenticeship as well because sometimes now I read back to my early stuff and think, oh dear, <laughs> that really did need a bit of work. <laughs> um, and you do learn as you go along. And you know, when you get to a publisher like Joffy Books, I mean, they've been brilliant. They're just so, I'm so lucky to have them. They're just amazing. Um, you know, you get someone like them, they've got good editors, you know, really good editors. Um, or any of your characters go, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. You <laughs> You can't mess me around. <laughs> They're editing your characters. Well, just sometimes I sit there and think, ah, I really laboured over that bit. Where's it gone? Oh, I know it, it can be a painful process, but I, it's it's one of those things where you, I guess, sort of accepting that they, they're going to make it better, isn't it? Exactly. The, the, the whole thing is they want to make the book the best it can be. And you can't be precious with your words. You really can't. You know, sometimes you've just got to sort of throw up your hands and say, actually, that reads quite well the way you've done. Yeah, it. it's painful, but it's good. <laughs> yeah. Give me a give me a minute to process. Yes, I will um, get over this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one of the things that we got asked as well was um, Linda, um, also a big fan, has asked in all your books as you've written loads of books now. Um, do you have like a favourite protagonist? That's Ooh. tough, isn't it? Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. I think Alistair Ashcroft has got to be probably the, the best one to write because I couldn't help feeling sorry for him for a bad, really bad star. And then he turns so evil. Uh, it's, uh, but I've always got that little bit in the background that he was just a little boy and awful things happened to him. And he saw something he should never have seen. And, you know, part of me still feels sorry for him. <laughs> so, yes, I'd say Alistair Ashcroft is probably my my, my favourite anti-hero there. I love that. And we've had a few questions from Jean. And I was going to ask you, in a, in a quirky way, what was it like meeting, meeting Jackson, a.k.a. Richard Armitage? I could speak for hours. <laughs> 
he is the light. I've not met him in person. I imagine it was wonderful. He is the nicest, nicest man you could wish to meet. He just, he's got a, one of the knack of of just making everyone feel like he's known you for years and you're his friend. You know, he's he's a really, really good man. And he came, he came all the way up here to to see the fans because he was recording the um uh the the, the series you know with Jackman. Um, he came up to have a look at the fence and to sort of see what it was all about. And he said he, he, he was so interested in whether he was getting it right for me. Now, most people don't do that because they do their own version of it and that's the end of it. But he was, you know, he was really sort of concerned that he was putting it over as I would want it. And he even said, come up to Audible and you can sit in the studio while I record one of your books. So I was up there like a shot as you go. I was going to say, did you do it? Were you like, sign me up now? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he was just, uh, he's just a really, really nice man. Well, because Jean had said that it was a genius move. And and I agree. Um, I think he really, because I've listened to um, some of your books in Audible. And it's just superb. And did you have any say in that? Like, how did it come about that Richard ended up doing it? I don't, do you know, Audible chose him for my book because they were, the, the girls in the office at Audible loved the one that we'd sent them, which was their lost daughters. Uh, in actual fact, that was the second book in the series. But um they they took their lost daughters because they thought it was really powerful um and they said we want richard for this and, and i thought oh yes please <laughs> uh, and he, he, he just made a fabulous job and you know what i love about the way he he, he narrates he can do women's voices so well because he doesn't try to be he doesn't come over like a pantomime dame like some of no. the narrators do all he does is just soften his voice and when he came up here, I said, I think you do Marie as well as you do Jackman. And he said, oh, <laughs> oh now, which one should I play if we go on TV? <laughs> I love that. And we, we've talked in our um, monthly book group that whoever does the audio of a book can make or break it. Oh. Um, and to have someone like Richard Armitage is superb because, as you say, he's so good. But then sometimes you have others where you're like, there's no change in the tone at all. You're like, which character's talking? And um, Jean has asked, like, as you as the author, did you have any hand in the way the voices of the characters that Richard did and the accents? Or did he just roll with that as an actor and do that himself? Actually, he got me to do some recordings of some local people. Uh, and my friend's son did a whole load of things on his phone and sent them over to Richard so he could hear my old neighbours where I, I lived about a mile down the road are real Lincolnshire yellow bellies. They're, they're sort of born and bred, family born and bred. And they've got wonderful voices. And we did the wife doing one page and then the husband doing another so he could hear a woman's voice and a man's voice in a real Lincolnshire accent. So he really did. He did his homework on that, and also I sent him a book on the on the dialect, because there's all sorts of uh, very we've got some very odd and unusual sort of words for things up here. Uh, so we sent him a book on that just so he could sort of skim through it and see what I was going on about if I lapsed into dialect at all. <laughs> I love that. Like he he obviously takes it very seriously. Oh, it, it shows of yeah. how good a job he does do. He's an actor, and and that's. Yeah. You know, he, he loves what he's doing. And to do the part properly, he, he does his homework. And I've never known yeah. that before. Well, it's, it's almost like yourself as a, as a writer. You, you do research before you put pen to paper. Yeah. Um, so he's doing the equivalent, really, isn't he? Before yeah, he, he does the audio. Um, you've already alluded to other books that you're, you're writing. Can you tell us anything about that? So you can say that again. That you've alluded to the other works and the other books that you're working on. Oh yes. Um, well, we've got a Matt Ballard has just gone through. That's in um, that's in editing at the moment, uh, and that one. That was, painful uh, process. That that was actually that was a slightly scary one too. Um, it, it, it sort of starts off with a, a night photographer, um, and he photographs something he shouldn't. Um, but he doesn't know it because he, he just he hadn't seen this it's only when he gets his uh, his sd card back into this computer and sees some of the things that he's actually photographed he realizes that is this right and he, he wants to go back and you know discover what's going on but sadly <laughs> he's found dead 
I was going to say, um, it doesn't sound like it's going to work out well for this chap. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's the intro to it. And then, of course, we've got another Jackman with, as I say, who's gone to um, Audible already. So that one's, uh, well, that's my creepy house. So, uh, and now I'm on, back onto Nikki. So uh, I've only just started that one. So uh, I'm not quite sure where the characters are going to take me with that. How do you, how is it for you as a writer to switch between the like different series? How do you, do you, is that quite interesting for you that you're writing when you're writing around different characters or is it a bit like oh god where am i i, I do sometimes get the wrong policeman in the wrong series oh, do you because i imagine there's a lot of there's a lot of backstory for all of them as well that you've yeah. got to keep in mind it's because there's so many characters in a in a crime you, you can't help it because you've got you've got your criminals you know they've got all the people who work with them you've got your victims you've got all your police officers you've got everybody's families you know you turn out to have hundreds of characters running through a book so uh, but i actually love i love writing them all individually you know i've got a different feel for for each of the three series you know like i sort of started immediately the minute i think about nikki i'm into nikki mode and how she speaks and how she thinks um and that's fine and as long as i put a little cast list on the wall so i know i've got all the right the right police officers in the right station i was going to ask that do you have a lot of notes that you have that you can refer to i've got um, a whiteboard behind me um which, ooh, I, okay. <laughs> which i do sort of make notes on all, all the time because it, you have so many names you know and it's very easy to sort of give someone a name and think well oh, that'll do and then you, <laughs> then you think what did i call her <laughs> no that's all wrong let's go back and sort it all out it's uh yeah you, and you realize you've used so many names i've written 28 books you know yeah. I, I don't want to repeat them you know i suddenly realized i got a victim from one i had almost the same name as somebody from one of the other books i thought oh i can't do that so and you think well how many times can i use the same name which you can't <laughs> then you start in, inventing slightly odd names <laughs> to try and like go what name's going to come up with now <laughs> um and you've also got like you've got your standalone book guide star and i think that was something that you were uh, sort of in the back of your mind for a long time before you wrote it could you tell us about that yeah i, I wanted to write something just a little bit different uh, a little bit more an emotional book that was more mm. almost like women's fiction to be honest uh, about a police officer who, who gets injured badly injured and it was really her road back to, to a, a life again uh, and how it affected her and also how it affected the people around her, like her partner, her crewmate, who possibly took it almost as bad as she did. Um, but, you know, we've managed to, I, I also built a real mystery into it. And, and also we had some urban explorers in that one. Um, and it, uh, it made an, an interesting story. I think I, I'd wanted to write it and jasper's really good you know he just uh he just sort of cut in and said you can you can do it of course you can you know you, you write whatever you want to so, that's awesome yeah i didn't have to stick to my series he just said no you, you do if you want it you write it so are there any other sort of in the background for you any ideas that you'd be tempted to do another standalone novel about I haven't thought of one at the moment, to be honest. I mean, I have to say, I've got some books that I've written going back probably about 25 years now that uh, had got a sort of paranormal element to them. Oh, yes, like they were some of the uh, first novels, weren't they? Yeah, and I, I actually really enjoyed writing them. And to be honest, I would have loved to have put them out at some point. Uh, there's, there's, there's two with the same character running through it and she has a, a talent and uh, but she gets herself in the most awful trouble i mean i would like to do it i would actually like to rewrite those i think bring them up to date uh but uh, i'm not sure i'm not sure i think i at the minute i should stick with nikki and jack and that what what you got what you're already doing and when you're saying about obviously you write incredibly fast is i think you have a tendency to write in the mornings mm. um and not during the afternoon like is, is are we looking at where your writing space is do you, yes. do you like to be in a certain place to do your writing Oh, because I, I write on a pc i don't have a laptop I, well i do have a laptop but i don't write on it um, I, li I like to be in, in my little zone 
Um, and no, I love writing here. I get lots of ideas out and elsewhere, which I just scribble down in notebooks and then promptly lose. And, uh, but, you know, I, I, it'd be I, like I, awesome. Someone will pick up going, it's great <laughs> ideas. <isn't> it? <laughs> but no, I, I, I like to write here on, on the computer. No, it's also we had another question from Jean as well, who asked about a Jackman and Evans TV series. And is that coming? Well, it's possible. I mean, it's, uh, been, it's it's been in negotiation for three years. Oh, gosh. Uh, and they say they take five years from start to production, you know, from the very first sort of suggestions. The thing is, Richard wants to to be Jackman and he also he also wants to go into directing and he is very he's very sort of close to a company called uh, Sprout Pictures and that is Stephen Fry and Gina Gina Carter um, and they're in negotiation to make a TV series of, of the Jackman books um, so they've done an awful lot of work and they've got a script writer I've got Tim Diniver, who is a you know, brilliant script writer. I think he's done Emma Dale, Coronation Street. You know, he's a he's a very very good script writer. So they've got a lot of work done. We we still haven't sort of got anything that's absolute. You know, apparently they plan a lot of this. They do a lot. They they do these visual, um, you know, things that they can sort of take around to show to people to to try and sell like videos of of the ideas but we don't know whether they'll go ahead. And if they did, I think what they would do is do a kind of amalgam of some of the books. It wouldn't be just one of the stories as an episode. I think they would sort of mix them up. And of course you do have to have diversity these days in, uh, in everything you do with TV. So I know a lot of the characters would change. Um, but even so, you know, they, 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 they want it, you know, and I'd love them to do it, absolutely love it. I want to put the fens on the map and not in the way that Wild Bill did it. <laughs> I don't know if anybody <laughs> is a great fan of Wild Bill and I'm ever so sorry if that's the case, but it did not show the fens as they truly are, as this sort of an amazing skyscapes and oh just it's, it's an incredible place and I would love to put the fens on the map. It's, it's all very, very exciting. It's obviously Rich has done a lot of Colin Coburn's for Netflix yeah. as well. So, yeah. I mean, he'll be just phenomenal as Jack Jackman. It'd, be, it'd just oh, be really? fantastic. And we've all been listening to him, be him. So it'll be like, yes, this is perfect. I'm not sure he can double off, double and be Evans <laughs> no, in the TV could show. Be, could be tricky. <laughs> <laughs> um so anyone i mean because this is sort of in the like going on in the background and like which has already said he, he'd love to be jackman have you started to think about who you would like to play evans i don't think i'd have any say in it <laughs> yeah but is there any is there, have you actually sort of thought about it though do you know there's a there's an actress she, when she was young that what i see is a little bit of an actress called julie graham and when she was younger she's very she got lovely beautiful dark hair and she got this lovely sort of Gaelic accent she'd use. And I just, I thought she was a, she wasn't as tall as I see Marie. I haven't seen a Marie. I haven't seen an actress that I would actually say, that's the one. Um, but Julie Graham has got an awful lot of Marie in her. And, and I used to, I, I'd see her very much you know, facially, especially when she was younger. So uh, I don't, I don't know who they, I mean, they'll probably find, you know, it's a completely different person if they ever did get it on the TV. They might choose someone and they'd just be like, oh my God, that's perfect. We well, don't know, do you? Mm. you know, and, and sometimes I think you're surprised when you do, you think, well, oh, that's not like the book, but the person actually can convey. It embodies it somehow. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we shall see. Let's hope. Cross I know. That would be fantastic. Um, we also we had another question from Louise who wanted to know, what do you like to read? So I'm wondering, like, do you have, do you like to escape away from crime and read something else? Or are you just like devouring crime authors as well? Well, over the last, shall we say, four or five years, I've read very little because I've spent so much time writing. <laughs> just don't have time. I've been um, busy with other things. But no, I love crime. I love crime. I love psychological crime. Um, but personally, I, I, I'd read anything. <laughs> I, you know, I, 
and audible i just adore because mm. you know i still have work to do apart from my writing you know and how do i get the ironing done i listen to audible and, and to be honest i can listen i've been listening to stuff that i i've heard in my childhood i've listened to things i would never dream of, of reading i've just listened to all the Chekhov plays but that was because guess who was narrating them <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Armitage. <laughs> He's brilliant. He, I, I am starting to feel like he must narrate every book in the world because yeah. I mean, I'm interviewing T.M. Logan tomorrow and he's just recorded his new book. Yes, he and is. I'm like, That's right. No, I sent him a message and said, you're really lucky. Yeah, it's just <laughs> extraordinary. And like, I think all authors are like, can we have him? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, he just is brilliant. He's just brilliant. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, I wanted to ask as well, like when you when you said about that you do like crime, is there like a specific crime author? It's hard to choose sometimes. When you do have the time to read it, is there, is there like a favourite of yours? Do you know, to be honest, I love some of the old, I mean, I, I, there's some brilliant, brilliant crime authors. I never read any of our Joffy books authors because I never ever want to accidentally just catch on to a tiny little hint of something and make it into a book of my own. I, so I don't personally read our, our lovely Joffrey authors. But um, I like some of the Golden Age crime as well. Uh, I love Agatha Christie because I've built up on Agatha Christie. I love all the Sherlock Holmes. Um, I love things with, with real sort of back character. Um, but then I like Sophie Hannah. Um, yeah. You know, there, there's so many brilliant, brilliant authors. Uh, Mark Billingham. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you could go on and on, couldn't you? You know, there's, there's, there's just fabulous authors out there. It's uh, awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge Agatha Christie fan, yeah. and I've seen that Richard um, said that he found you to be a bit like Agatha Christie, which I thought was lovely. <laughs> um, you know, this, this, <laughs> I know. I thought that was that was awesome. And, and obviously, we've got the Sophie Hannah did the, our last festival in March with us, and she does Pyro, doesn't she? Yes. And then we've, we've got this new Marple coming up as well. So it's it's exciting times for people yeah, like us that, that like a bit of Agatha Christie. Yeah. Um, but yes, yes, he did compare you to Agatha Christie. Yeah. So I thought that was wonderful. Um, you, you're almost as prolific. Um, <laughs> I'm um, 70 odd yet. Don't I know, but you, you've written an extraordinary amount. And um, quite a short space of time, to be honest. In, in, yeah, like in condensed and being able to like write them that quickly. Because often authors, it's like a year yeah. for a book. And you're like, you know, multiple ones it's extraordinary um i just wanted to to finish this evening by asking you joy like what's one of the favorite things for you about being an author what's an aspect of it that you absolutely love the readers because i've had messages i mean these books have put me in touch with people all over the world i get so many messages that just bring tears to my eyes and you don't realize the effect that books have on some people, especially throughout COVID. Um, I had a message from a, a nurse in Australia and she said, I've got one of your books in the sluice room and I take 20 minutes and I can go and be in another place because I couldn't stand it here all the time with what's going on if I couldn't escape to the fens. And she was thanking me. And I thought, you know, it's so humbling. Yeah. You know, and there's, you hear the stories of some people are just heartbreaking and you, you just you, you just talk to them and you, you make new friends and the readers to me are everything and they are to Joffy as well the, the readers are very very important that's why we try and keep things you know like the kindle books at 99p whenever we can so people can afford them we just want people to read them you know we're not trying to make a fortune out of that it's just it's lovely to know that you can make something available to, to everybody. I absolutely love that. And we're at Suffolk Libraries are very passionate about that. So even though this festival in, in March is part of our annual fundraising, we still make all the events free with an option to donate. Because you say you, you want to make these, um, you know, like amazing authors like yourself and, you know, the books available to people so they can take on these journeys, so they can escape. You know, life can be pretty hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, it's a lifeline reading these books. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, 
It's <laughs> wonderful. I know we're getting all emotional. It's been wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, we're always beyond grateful at Suffolk Libraries for your support. You can find out more about all the amazing services that we do have on our website. When this live event concludes, you will be directed to our website where you can buy your very own copy of The Night Thief, which is a brilliant book. It's pretty scary, um, but brilliantly written. It's like, oh, but really, really good um, story. Um, so do check it out. And, you know, finally, Joy, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to meet you. Oh, thank you so much for having me along. It's been, it's been a lovely evening.